Welcome to Backroom Breakdown with Laura and your analysis of local, state, and federal politics. This is DITV's weekly politics segment where I'll discuss important political events impacting Iowa City. I'm your host, Lauren Johnson. On Tuesday, President Biden signed a bill making lynching a federal hate crime into law after it passed the U.S. Senate with unanimous support earlier this month. The Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act was introduced in the House by Representative Bobby L. Rush, a Democrat from Illinois, and in the Senate by Democratic Senator Cory Booker from New Jersey and Republican Senator Tim Scott from South Carolina. The act is named after Emmett Till, a 14-year-old Chicagoan black boy who was brutally murdered in August of 1955 by a group of white men in Mississippi after allegedly whistling at a white woman. Till's murder is considered a catalyst for the civil rights movement and it garnered national attention. According to the Tuskegee University Archives Repository, which houses a large collection of records regarding lynching from 1882 to 1968, 4,743 people were lynched in the United States. Almost three quarters of the people who were lynched during this time period were black. Lynching was a terror tactic used in primarily southern states after the Civil War as a way of maintaining white supremacy. Anti-lynching legislation was first introduced to Congress in the year 1900 by Representative George White, who at the time was the only black person in Congress. His bill failed to gain much support. In the 1920s, a U.S. representative from Missouri named Leonidas Dyer proposed anti-lynching legislation after a racially charged riot against black residents in St. Louis in early July of 1917. His bill managed to pass the House in 1922, but failed to pass the Senate. House Democrats managed to pass federal anti-lynching bills two other times in 1937 and 1940. Senate filibusters blocked both bills. Since 1900, anti-lynching legislation has been introduced in Congress more than 240 times. In June 2018, the Justice for Victims of Lynching Act was introduced in the Senate by then-Senator Kamala Harris as well as Senators Cory Booker and Tim Scott. It passed the Senate in December of 2018, but the House didn't have time left in the session to consider it, so they didn't pick it up. However, Representative Bobby Rush introduced the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act in January of 2019, and it passed the House in February of 2020. The Senate considered it, but Republican Senator Rand Paul from Kentucky rejected passing it by unanimous consent. He argued that the terminology in the bill was too broad, saying, quote, I don't think it's a good idea to conflate someone who has an altercation where they had minor bruises with lynching. That's a disservice to those who are lynched in our history, end quote. Paul's concerns were addressed, and he is now a co-sponsor of the final bill. Biden signed this bill in the White House Rose Garden and gave a speech where he discussed the importance of making lynching a federal hate crime. It was pure terror to enforce the lie that not everyone, not everyone belongs in America, not everyone is created equal. Terror to systematically undermine hard-fought hard civil rights. Terror, not just in the dark of the night, but in broad daylight. Vice President Harris also gave remarks at the signing, where she highlighted the prevalence lynching still has in America today. Lynching is not a relic of the past. Racial acts of terror still occur in our nation. And when they do, we must all have the courage to name them and hold the perpetrators to account. The fact that it took over a hundred years to pass this legislation demonstrates how much power the Senate filibuster affords. A small minority was able to block the passage of this bill on multiple occasions after it passed the House. The filibuster's ties to the failure to pass anti-lynching legislation creates a concerning legacy for it. When you consider the push to abolish the filibuster last fall, its usage to block the creation of laws making lynching a federal hate crime should not be ignored. Thanks for tuning in to Backroom Breakdown. Check back in next week for a special episode from Washington, D.C., where I'll cover more of the latest political news affecting Iowa City, Iowa, and the USA. I'm Lauren Johnson. Have a great day.